Hello, in this video I want to walk you through the installation of OpenFoam on our newly installed Linux Mint system. This is basically the same for any flavor of Ubuntu. So we go to the OpenFoam website, openfoam.com. There's another version of openfoam.org, which is also commonly used, but these two versions are slightly different. Um, and I use openfoam.com for compatibility, uh, compatibility issues with some of the other software. But um, so let's go to openfoam.com, download Linux, and select the Ubuntu system here. Um, the advantage for all this is that we can use pre-compiled packages for most um, simulation software on Ubuntu. We need to compile some things later, but for most things we can simply use pre-compiled packages. In many cases we need to add what is called a repository to that. Um, we can install OpenFoam without adding that, but that will limit us to an old version. So let's get the current version of OpenFoam. So copy this command. So that's two, it's two commands basically that we need to uh, enter into the terminal for that installation to happen. The first command, and you can copy and paste that in here simply, is this one which you will find here um, you can do one of these two yeah it's doesn't really matter which one curl is the more modern one um, there's another way to get this in there and that is using well you can use Control c in the editor uh, in in the browser you cannot use Control c on the terminal or Control v which won't work because control C, control V are, well, or Linux or the Unix system is older than Windows and the control C, control V convention for copy and paste, that control C is already taken and control C means interrupt the running process. So if you type control C in a terminal, it will stop whatever is running in there. So we need a different way. So we can either go right click, use paste, from there, or you go for Control Shift V to enter that. Um, when you click Enter, hit Enter the after that, you get password for TS, which is my user. The user that we set up when we set up the system is automatically an administration user, which means you can use administrator commands to do administration tasks. Um, this command is a demonstration of what uh, Unix is all about. It's using commands in succession or what the terminal or the command line is all about. curl is a command which downloads a link from the internet, in this case a shell script. And the pipe character, this upright pipe character, which is... Um, to the left of Z on your British keyboard or to the right of the angled bracket on a US keyboard is the pipe character, which means we pipe the output of this command into this command. And the next command is sudo, which is super user do, which means execute the following command with super user, super user rights or administrator rights. Uh, this is basically the um, access ele elevation, sudo, and bash is the command that gets executed and which reads the output of the previous command. So the bash is the shell, which is basically what's running in this terminal. So curl downloads a shell script, which is a file which has multiple shell commands in it. The, that script is then piped into bash, which is run with super user rights. This is what this command does. 
This all sounds terribly complicated at the moment, most likely to most of you, but once you get the hang of these command line tools, um, they are quite a lot more powerful than anything that you can do on the GUI. It's like having a mini programming language for your daily computing needs. So this will take this shell script and execute it with super user rights. And what's in this shell script are a few commands which basically add this repository to our repository list. So I need to give this my password and then it's going to do that. It is going to run up get update already. This is taking a while. Wouldn't take that long actually, but most likely one of the servers has a problem. Okay, this is now finished. Um, let's run this last command again because many of these scripts don't do that so it's a good idea after you change a repository you, to update the package list which will download all the package lists again and then we can install open foam which is again sudo because we want to use an administrator right um, to install software apt apt is the package manager that comes with a uh, Debian based installations or with Ubuntu installation um, based distributions and that takes a command install and then what we want to install and that is a version of open foam um, on the instructions it says apt get which is the old version of apt it's basically the same thing you both work but apt is the more modern one and apt get will be uh, deprecated in a while so if you start a new get started with apt and that will be the uh, command going forward um, let me show you another interesting feature on the shell um, if i hit if i type this open foam here and i hit tab twice <coughs> it gives me a completion tab is the auto completion key um, you may know that from an ide from programming um, it works in the shell or the command line as well. So this now tells me, okay, you can install all these different packages. It's context sensitive. So in this context, I'm in the apt command. I have told it install. The shell automatically knows that, okay, the only thing that makes sense at this point is package names. So it gives me the package names that are not installed yet that I can install that start with open foam. So I want to install the most current version, which is 2112. 21 for the year, 12 for the month. So this is brand new. And I want to install the default package or the default version of OpenFoam, which basically brings in everything. And I also want to install the previous version of OpenFoam, which is 2106. And if I type DEF or DE, then it only tells me default or development. Um, DEF, default, and tab completion complete saves me typing those additional four characters. So enter, it will now check, and it will tell me, okay, we will need to install a host of different packages, mainly a compiler, a lot of libraries that are needed for the, for the computations and so on. Um, it suggests a few other packages, which is not going to install though, but it will install all these packages that OpenFoam depends on automatically so you don't need to worry about not having um, some prerequisite software installed when you use the package manager so that will now download all the required software we could have done this um, via the software manager which is this icon here um, so if i enter open foam in this one then that will also give me open foam, but it will only give me, oh no, it gives me 2012, 01. 
Okay, this gives me the last version basically only. Yeah. So I can install that as well from here. So this gives me the last version of Open Foam, but I cannot select which version. This is the basic version that I can get there. I can get more clear separation on which one it is that I want to install when I use the command line. So let me see if this brings up something. So no, the software manager or the app store, if you want so want, does not give you all the sub packages that you can select. So in this case, command line is the best option here. So it's now going through the installation after it has downloaded all of this stuff. And then we can start using it. Let me show you something else on the software manager. When you go in here and we want to install Paraview as well, which is our post-processing tool. So here you have the choice between two versions. One says flat hub. That is a flat pack, which is a package that comes with all the dependencies in it. And it comes without the flat hub extension, which is a distribution package. Typically, a distribution package will be smaller and faster to run. Um, it is usually also a bit older. So this is version 5.7 here, whereas the flat hub version is 5.9. So you can install both, but you see this is 3.6 gigabytes big. So that is quite a lot of download. And this only takes 390 megabytes. So the system installation is quite a lot smaller. So I can simply say install here and that will install it. But for the benefit of those who use the Windows subsystem for Linux, let's stay on the terminal. sudo apt install paraview will simply pull in all the dependencies again and install paraview for us. Um, I cannot start open from, from the start menu because open foam is not a program that has a graphical user interface um, so we need to run that from the terminal later on but i can once this is installed run paraview from this start menu let's wait till the installation is finished it has already installed paraview that's why i'm i already see it so paraview and I can start Paraview graphically. So Paraview is the post-processing tool we're going to use, which is basically just like any other post-processing tool, very powerful post-processing tool. It is developed by um, Los Alamos National Laboratories, Sandia National Laboratories in the US. So they know uh, that they, they are very, uh, high profile players that develop this tool. So it's one of the most powerful post-processing tools that I know. Um, so once you're getting used to it, it will be um, a very powerful tool for your post-processing needs, for all the post-processing you need to do for your project. So with this, I'm going to stop this recording and we'll be back with more installations.